Welcome everyone to today's Career by Design webinar sponsored by the Office of Alumni Relations. My name is Michelle Rapp and I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Career Strategy and I'm here with Diana Bronchuk, Program Assistant with our team. And we're really delighted to have alumna and author and leadership and executive coach Beth Benati Kennedy here with us today um, to talk with us about five strategies to boost resilience and beat burnout. Just to let you know, we will be recording this session and also sharing the recording um, after, the, after the event. And there will be opportunities to participate and ask questions. And the chat is available through the purple arrow in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. So if you click on the purple arrow, you'll see a, a bubble symbol. And that's when you click on that, you'll be able to participate in the chat. So thank you for joining us today. I want to tell you a little bit about Beth. Beth Bonatti Kennedy is a leadership and executive coach who helps leaders feel energized and focused while they do their best work. She has worked with leaders at well-known companies such as the Gillette Company, Nike, and Converse, as well as many nonprofit and small businesses providing leadership and executive coaching and training. She is the author of the book, Career Recharge, Five Strategies to Boost Resilience and Beat Burnout, and speaks all over the world at conferences and corporations on leadership, resilience, and how to avoid burnout so you can enjoy a thriving career in life. Beth also has an MS in Human Resource Counseling from Northeastern. On weekends, you'll find her recharging on the yoga mat and having fun with her family and their sweet puppy, Maple, playing at the beach. So we're very excited to have her here today leading our webinar. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Thank you, Michelle. And it's really excited to be on this webinar with so many Northeastern grads and other professionals from all over. So I just want to say as far as materials, all you need is one sheet of paper or your notebook. And I'm going to have you divide it into three columns, an A column, a B column, and a C column. And on top of the A column, you're going to put the word start. On top of the B column, you're going to put the word stop. And on top of the C column, you're going to put the word continue. So we're going to have a start, we're going to have a stop, and we're going to have a continue. So you can probably get a sense already is that at the end of this hour, I really want this time to add impact and action to your recharge. So. I want to begin because I think it's important because it has a strong connection to Northeastern with sharing my story on why my mission and vision is to prevent burnout for employees anywhere I can have a chance to talk with them and really stress the importance of resiliency. This was where my dream career began after Northeastern. I was really lucky to land this incredible job where I worked in five Boston public schools. I was in two high schools, three middle schools, creating career development programs for students, encouraging the high school students to think about careers, helping them get into college. And I was the first two years, the first three years, I, I couldn't stop telling people how excited I was. But I will share with you, it was challenging. There were so many burned out teachers and I kept on saying, I can do this. I was so motivated after my graduate school experience. And I was so excited to actually use what I learned and these burned out teachers were everywhere. But I persisted and I felt like, I felt like I could still make a difference. The conditions were also really tough. Um, one of the schools, uh, they always put me in the basement. The school counselor somehow ended up in the basement. And they always had these kind of funky smells to them. And one of them in particular was the worst. But the kids there needed the services so much. So I, I thought that positive attitude could just keep me going. But it didn't. Um, some of the smells, what I realized in that one school, too, I started hearing meowing. I was actually sharing my office with a bunch of stray cats, which the school said, Beth, it is what it is. And I persisted. I persisted. And about year six, I call it going down the burnout escalator. I, those burned out teachers were starting to get under my skin. 
And the other thing I realized outside my office, and this was so sad to me, was I realized I just wasn't making the impact that I needed to make at this point in my career. Students wouldn't show up for school. There was no system to follow up why the students weren't at school. I would do parent meetings at night and I would only have one parent show up. And I was going down, I continued to go down the burnout escalator. And one day the big red flag went off and that, and I was so upset and embarrassed to admit this, but this is what happened. And I found myself becoming a clock watcher. It used to drive me crazy. The teachers would have their coats on five minutes before school would end. And I started doing that day after day. And that's when I said, I need to really take a deep breath and really focus on how I can focus on my own burnout. Because I still wasn't ready to leave. And I, I have to say, I had a great, I was hired by a Boston University to be in the schools. And I had a great manager. And, and I found John Kabat-Zinn's Mind Body Stress Reduction Eight Week Program. And I attended that program and it changed my life because what it did, it was gave me the energy to start being aware on what were some of those stressors that were pushing me down that escalator. And it also gave me the energy to realize I need to think about other, other careers, other ways I could use Again, my master's in human resource counseling. And I always wanted to have my, my own business. So as I focused on my resiliency, I then was able to move out of burnout. So if we look at some of the statistics with burnout, it's really scary. 46% of new employees burn out in the first 18 months. So if we think about what's happening in the first 18 months, what's happening to someone like me that was, you know, I finally left it nine and a half years. Um, but it's really an epidemic and it's, and it's a reason why I feel so passionate about preventing it. We all have a statistic about what it's costing em employers. Three times the cost of losing an employee in the first year is estimated to be at least three times the salary. So if you had to think about what is going on, and if I was with you right now, we'd be, we'd be flip charting this. Um, all of these reasons are probably exactly what is going through your head. Technology being connected 24 seven. And then you may have heard this whole idea of decision fatigue. Um, researchers are finding that our poor brains can't handle all this, all the decisions that we're making. Um, we hear, there's lots of research about lack of recognition. So depending on somebody and their values, um, that can actually lead to burnout. Unclear job expectations, not focusing on our values and strengths. So we're seeing a lot of research on the importance of strengths and the importance of really being able to do what fits our talents. The next one won't surprise anybody, working too much. And there's research showing some of us are just being taking life too seriously. You know, we're so concerned about, you know, really getting that job done that we're forgetting to have fun at work. There's a reason why Google gets such high ratings to work there. Sleep, we've all seen this over and over. Um, a big piece of the research that I did shows that if we don't have close supportive relationships and the organization Gallup has done a lot of research on this, that can also cause to burnout. And our lifestyle and personality traits. You know, I came from a family where my dad was an incredible, incredible worker. Um, had his own moving company, but was also a workaholic. So we inherit some of these, these personality traits, whether we like it or not. So I always just felt like, you know, you have to give 100 and plus percent. So we, we know the type A, the overachiever, perfectionism. And now I coach a lot of scientists in the Cambridge area. And they've been sharing with me all the on the depleted brain. So 
The part that I still find unbelievable for me is that even when you're passionate about what you're doing, burnout can hit you like being hit by a train. And that's exactly what happened to me. So is the reason why I have found resilience is so important. For the past 25 years, I've had my own coaching business. And I, I introduced a model, which I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. And But what was most important is when this model, when I started working on these five strategies, the most exciting part was what my client shared with me. The two things they found right off the bat was they had greater energy and enhanced focus. So we think about, you know, I think we think about our cell phones, those cell phones, how many of you just think about it right now, always remember to charge it at night or in the morning you might get to work and say, okay, I'm at 30%, I charge it. But do we take the time on a daily basis to recharge ourselves? And I was so excited when my clients shared with, you know, I said to them, part of the process of working with me is we're going to focus on your resiliency because I believe resiliency is, is a key competency that we all need to focus on in our careers. So I also have a full day class that goes with my book and the other things, the other areas and benefits that individuals have shared with me is they're making better decisions. They're more confident definitely more productive because it's almost like, and I'd like to describe it as that rubber band. If you're like me, we work and work and work. And then it's like, oh my gosh, now we got to figure out the food shopping and we need to maybe get the kids somewhere, maybe, and we get stretched so thin. So what resiliency is, it's, you know, I, many people define resiliency as just bouncing back. But I really want you to think about today as moving forward despite the challenges. Because I appreciate stress management, but there are certain stressors and we all know what they are. You know, I'm at an age where, you know, me and my friends have aging parents. And we just can't pretend that's going to disappear. But if we focus on our resiliency and have the energy, it's going to help us with the aging parents, with our own health and also give us the focus and energy we need for our career. So a few of the other benefits that my clients have shared with me is influence. They find now when they're at meetings, you know, they aren't multitasking as much as they used to. They are making a difference. They're happier. They're, they find their leadership is more effective. And this last one I think we all can admit to, managing change is the norm now. So it's not like 10 or 15 years ago when there were a few changes going on. The organizations that I work in, some people say to me, Beth, I've had four different managers in one year. So I believe just like we charge our phones, we need to figure out a way to focus on our resilience on a daily basis. Which brings me to the Bonatti resiliency model. And the word Bonatti, it, my model is named after my dad, who I mentioned was one of these incredible people who was very present, even though he had incredible challenges of starting and running this family business. So I want to share with you today the first three areas, and hopefully um, I will get to meet some of you on April 24th in Boston I'll be having an evening program from 6 to 7.30 p.m., which I will continue to work through the model. So let me just give you a little snapshot of all the areas, and then that's where that nice sheet's going to come into play, the start, stop, and continue. So well-being, I know, we've all heard about how important this is, physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Well, one thing I found when I was going through burnout was I was always a good exerciser. I was, but what happened was I became, I began doing that a little bit too much. So we, we have to remember that importance, that 80-20 that rule. We have to focus on moderation with all these strategies. And even well-being sometimes can be unhealthy if that, if we focus on that, 
and don't focus on some of these other areas. So self-awareness, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you some questions to so just think about. Are you clear on your purpose? What is the difference you wanna make in your department or if you have your own business or if you're a professor? What is the legacy you wanna to leave to this world? And mindset, and I don't mean by mindset that you need to be Pollyanna, Mrs. Mr. or Mrs. Positive all the time. But I wanna know how is your growth mindset? Some of you that are familiar with Carol Dweck's work, the research shows having a growth mindset will make us more productive and more adaptable. And then type. So some of you may be familiar with uh, the Myers-Briggs or the DISC. Are you aware of your personality and how to flex it and how to handle stress? And then the third area is brand. And this was an area that I knew nothing about when I was in my 20s, 29 when I hit my burnout. Um, and now I'm a certified brand analyst for an organization called 360 Reach. So all of my clients go through a branding process where we get really clear on what their top attributes are and what is the impact that they wanna make, again, not only for their department, but in the big picture, you know, what is that five-year goal? And there's a part of brand that people often don't think about, and that's the reputation. So when you're not in the conference room, what are people saying about you? So this is an important part of resiliency, because if we don't know what our strengths are, again, we're going to be we're going to be like one of those rubber bands that we're just moving in lots of different directions and we don't have a clear focus and someone else might have a, have a better focus they think for us which causes us to get burned out and stressed out the fourth area of the model is connection and i'm going to um, just share one statistic which which is that there's been some research to show some of you might be familiar with the blue zones um, and the research has shown that 85% of life satisfaction comes from connecting with others. So we want to make sure we have a connection plan. We want to make sure that unlike what I was doing in my career in my 20s, I just worked, worked, worked. We got to make sure we're spending time personally and professionally with people that energize us. And who are, who are our champions? So connection is a huge piece of resiliency because when we hit those challenges, others to kind of keep us moving forward. And then finally, innovation. And I know innovation is a, is a big buzzword these days, but when I think about innovation, I don't just think about career goals. I want you to think about personal fun goals. So I have my clients think about every week, not only what is their professional goal, but what sort of fun are you having this week? Uh, I work with a lot of oncologists, I work with a lot of scientists and engineers, and they get super focused and they forget how important that is. So that's a, that's a quick overview of my model. And now I wanna really drive right in, have you think about right now your well-being, And where it says start, stop and continue, we first have to celebrate the good job you're doing. Because many of you, probably have great well-being well-being things that you're doing automatically. And the reason why this is so important to focus on our well-being is what's happening to our brain is our amygdala is being hijacked from all the stress. Again, going down down that stress escalator. If I had you guys chat your stressors just from this morning, we could probably spend 20 minutes on it. And what's happening to our brain is when the amygdala gets hijacked, the prefrontal cortex is like our CEO. This is where we make decisions. This is where we become strategic. And, think, and by the end of the day, if you ever start feeling like, if you're like, wow, why do I keep feeling fuzzy like this? That's because we have too much stress. So, and we know we need stress because stress keeps us motivated. It's good stress, you stress, but the challenge becomes the distress. The stress that I was dealing with in the schools 
it got to a point where I was just on overload and my, my poor prefrontal cortex just could not react the way it needed to, to keep me energized and excited about my career. So you probably, we have all seen the latest mindfulness is a big piece of well-being. And I thought, I wanted to share the statistic because I thought it was just um, very interesting. 47% of us on a daily day is the average amount of time we spend mind wandering. 70% of leaders report regularly unable to be attentive in meetings. So think about that. What is going on? Our, our, if we're not attentive in meetings, how productive can we be? 2% regularly make time to enhance personal productivity. So this is where resiliency comes in as making it a habit. And 45% of our day is spent emailing. So I've actually, when, I, when I've taught this in classes, people have said, Beth, I probably spend 75% of my day emailing. So one of the strategies that I wanted to share that has been really helpful for me, and I've have, I would say at this point, probably 40 or 45 clients that have used has been daily meditation. And I don't mean that you have to sit in the corner with your legs folded. You can start with just one or two minutes a day. Again, what we're trying to do is give our brain some time to just relax. And I wanted to share with you today some best practices that I have learned over the years. And there are three different apps that I have piloted, actually four, um, with my clients. The one that I use and people have seemed to really find add great impact is calm.com. So I put that up here for you. And all of these apps offer a free week trial. The Calm app, I really like it because every day the um, meditator, the woman who designed it, Tamara Levitt, sends a 10-minute meditation. And what I like about it is I'm someone who gets bored with the same thing. So every day you get a brand new meditation. But the other thing I like about it is if you say, you know what, maybe I will start to give my brain a break and give this a try, you could set your Calm app for two minutes and she will take you through a two minute app. Uh, just last week, I was had an opportunity to present at a conference in Toronto, and I met Dan Harris, who he, some of you may be familiar with his app, it's 10% Happier. He is the broadcast journalist who had a panic attack on national news, and now he's become the meditation guru. And one of the things that he shared with me was, his mission now, as much as he loves being a broadcaster, is to get as many people in the world to, to at least try meditation. And I have to say, I feel my mission is very close to his because I cannot believe the difference it has had on all, on all my clients. And again, starting really small. So the reason why I had you make that little note, the little columns with the A, B, and the C is you may hear something on this webinar that you say, you know what, I think I wanna, maybe I wanna start and try to meditate. So you could put that down on column A and maybe you, want, you might wanna write down these three apps to try, um, the calm.com, Headspace, a lot of companies use Headspace. And there's a free app is the one I started and used for a year, which is Stop, Breathe and Think. So those of you that, are, that just want to give it a try after today, that might be something to put on your column A. Medtronic is a company that I've done some work for, and I wanted to share this quote from their former CEO, Bill George. The main business case for meditation is that if you are fully present on the job, you will be more effective as a leader, you will make better decisions, and you will work better with other people. When I saw this quote, I was thinking, is there, is there anything more I would want in my career to be fully present in my career, to be more effective as a leader, and to make better decisions? And I encourage you to think about how present you are, and is this something that you would like to give a try for your well-being? 
So now I'd like to open up the chat and I am going to ask you, I'd love to hear from you, how do you get mindfulness into your day? So what are some best practices for you? What are some simple strategies? And not only mindfulness, let's hit the whole area of well-being. So if there's a certain type of exercise you like, I would love for you to chat that in. We'll give you about a minute and then Michelle and Deanna are going to let us know what some of some of the different chats came in. And again, you can use the purple arrow on the lower right corner to access the chat box and you click on the little bubble. So we're getting some responses here. Deep breathing for five minutes during the work day. Walking, awesome. walking in the forest. Excellent. And so, so lots of research on the power of nature. And even in Boston and Cambridge, we can find, you know, around Northeastern, we can, we can still find beautiful green trees to, to kind of recharge us. We have also leaving the office at least once per day, even just to go outside for five minutes. Cuddling a purring cat. I love it. Grateful and thankful messages at the start of each day. And taking a walk by the water, journaling, midday gentle yoga. Oh, these are great. So those of you that just shared, where on underneath your column C, I want you to put what's the thing you're doing that you want to continue? So, um, because we also have to celebrate, this isn't just about, you know, getting all the right answers. We have to celebrate the good thing, the good habits that we're presently doing. We so often get up, caught up in our world and we need to do this, we need to do that. We also need to say, wow, we need to celebrate all of you taking time out to do a webinar from Northeastern. That's recharge time. Okay, is it okay if and, I move forward, um, Michelle? Beth, we just have a couple of, we have meditation at night and, a cool thing is we have someone, Mary, from the UK, so tea breaks are big. It's good to talk to my coworkers and socialize for a bit about something that isn't work. And we have meditation in the morning and remembering to focus on one thing at a time. These are so great. I think we can end the webinar now. <laughs> <laughs> we have great so, participants here. Yeah, so thank you, everyone, because I just think it adds so much to be able to hear from your expertise as well. And I wanted to share, Michelle mentioned my puppy. This is our puppy, Maple. And there's a strategy, there's actually research. And I, I wanna share that in my, I didn't wanna bore you with a zillion scientific slides, but in my book, Career Recharge, I have research for every single area of my model. And one of the research, piece of research that I share is the power of awe. And it's an amazing research study about whether it's out in nature or whether it's um, just something absolutely unbelievable that's happening to you in your life, what awe does to your brain. And that gives you that recharge. So again, the person that was, you know, petting their cat, it's simple, simple strategies that we can do to recharge ourselves. So what I want you to think about now is again, today is about action and influence and impact. So when I talk about well-being, I want you to think about exercise, healthy eating, maybe you have a yoga practice or a Zumba practice. And then we also wanna think about emotional and spiritual health. Um, do you take time off? We're seeing a lot of research about what they're calling chunking, where you work for 50 minutes and then you take a five minute recharge break where you stand up, get some water. Are you getting enough sleep, whether it's seven, eight, nine hours, some of us six, what you know, what you need? Research is showing celebrating. Again, not like I know there's also research showing with first graders we can't over celebrate everything they do, but are you celebrating some of the impact you're having in your career? Someone mentioned nature, talked about meditation, we talked about gratitude. I want you right now to start thinking about what is something that you've wanted to start in this area? And I'm going to share with you some strategies from my clients. One that clients have really found helpful is setting morning intentions. 
where they give themselves two words. And when they wake up, I have a lot of clients in very high pressure jobs. So the one that seems to be the most popular is calm and confident. The other one that's the most popular is patient and focused. So morning intentions, and, it's, and it can be paired up with some deep breathing, and it's something that you can do throughout the day. So the other strategy that a lot of my clients have found really helpful is limiting evening computer time. Many of my clients used to be on their computers till 10 or 11 o'clock in the evening. So some of them have stopped at eight, some of them have stopped at seven, some of them have said, Beth, I have young children, so I wanna put them to bed, and then I only give myself 30 minutes, I set a timer, and then I'm done with it. So again, it's these little tiny strategies that boost our resilience. Some of you might decide as a result of today, sounds like we already have a lot of meditators, but some of you may say, who, you know what? Maybe I need to give this a try. So that might be something that you're going to add to your start list. Letting it go. Um, I always say to my clients, some, you know, we have these stressors that hit us every day that are not in our control. So sometimes we need to put them in a hot air balloon and send them off. So we have the energy for us. The next one is a big one that I'm seeing a lot in corporate America is busy bragging and it's causing secondhand stress. So it's something to be aware of. Are we always just telling people that we're busy, 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 I can't meet you, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And are we focusing on what matters most? Let's, um, some of you that are familiar with Stephen Covey, I think a lot of his principles that he created many, many years ago are so relevant right now what are those key areas of our life and are we spending time on them? Someone mentioned, uh, which was wonderful, the pause breaths. And I'm gonna have everyone do it right now. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna try to inhale slowly for, for three, and then we're gonna exhale for four. So I'm gonna have you inhale, one, two, three, and exhale for four two, three, four. And then we would do that, you would do that three times. So this is again, another quick strategy. Oh, you know, you see that person that just gets under your skin. I gotta do my pause breath. In three, out for four. And there's lots of different, the, you know, there's hundreds of books just on breathing, but I wanted today to introduce quick, actionable strategies that will provide impact. So laughing, um, I just, I, I think it's amazing some of these colleagues that we have that just have the gift for being, bringing joy to the day. And those of us that aren't quite as funny, to share comic strips or whatever you can do to kind of have fun. Uh, as I mentioned, I also tend to work with a lot of workaholics. I think, you know, it, you tend to attract people that are like you and, one of the homework assignments I often give them is to make Sunday fun day. So what are you doing on a Sunday to make sure you have some fun before getting back to work? So now I want you to go to your action plan, your sheet that says A, B, and C. And I want you to write down under A, what is one thing that you wanna start? So some examples, maybe it's finding the exercise for you. Maybe it's starting to do Sunday fun day and get out into nature. Maybe it's taking more breaks during the workday. Maybe it's trying that 50 minute, you know, 50 minute working and then the, then the break. Maybe you're saying, you know what? I haven't had a vacation for six months. Maybe you need to plan a three day getaway for April or May. Or maybe you're saying, you know what? I'm doing a lot of these things, but I really like the idea of the pause breath. So I'm gonna have you all write down one, one strategy under A for well-being. And when you're done with that, then I want you to go to column B and think about, is there something you wanna stop? So for example, maybe you do feel like, I am just looking at my iPhone all the time. I'm gonna stop 7 p.m., I'm done with looking at my phone. 
what will I want you to think about what would help your well being? What would you like to stop? And then finally, this is C is our celebration one. What is the thing that you just want to continue? Like, I'm really grateful that since going to Northeastern, I've always been, I've always found yoga to be, to be a great recharge for me. So that is something that I will always continue to do. So I would write down yoga and put an exclamation point. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to write down 1A, 1B, and 1C for well-being. And then we're going to move to the next area of my model. Okay, so now we're moving to self-awareness and I gave you a quick overview on that before. Why is this so important for resilience? It's so important for resiliency because if we don't know where we want to go, we often don't get there. And I always tell people during my training, and I talk about this in the book, our purpose statement is going to be messy because our values, our life is always changing. But it's really important to have a compass and think about where do we want to go right now? And it's okay if we change. So, you know, sharing my story, I thought I was going to be that retired guidance counselor. And now I have my own, you know, leadership coaching business, totally different. But yet, if I look at the skill set, there's a lot of overlap. And it was the right, it was the right change for me to make. So we're going to we're going to take a little look at your own self-awareness. And I want you to think about are you aware of your values? The things that are most important to you in your life. So you probably have done many of you have done value exercises where you, you know, what's the top 3 things that are most important to you? Maybe it's making a difference to others, maybe it's um security, maybe it's stability. Maybe it's having time for my friends or having time for my family. And number two is, do you have a growth mindset? I have a feeling every person on this call wouldn't be on this call if you didn't, if you weren't open to learning. So I think you get a check plus plus for two. And then number three is, do you flex your personality? So again, um, we all are hardwired different ways. And one of the things I've learned, I got certified in the Myers Briggs. Uh, believe it or not, 28 years ago. And I always go back to that with my clients because a lot of times stressors happen because we're not aware of our personality. And by understanding other personalities, we can really learn how to flex, take a deep breath, and connect with them better. So I'm going to share with you some strategies for self awareness that my clients have found helpful. And then I'm going to have you start to think about what you want to start, what you want to stop, and what you want to continue. So a little, again, I, I, wish, I, was a, I wish I was a funny person, so I have to use comics. But um, I spent years on the road to success, but I was driving in the wrong direction. So I often get calls from individuals that are attorneys that are really burnt out. And they said, I loved, loved law school, but now that I'm practicing, I can't stand it. They're out there, you know, they've been 10, 11, 12 years. Um, and this happens in a lot of different career areas. And one of the things that I want to emphasize is many times when you focus on your recharge and you focus on your awareness and your values, by adding other things to your life, all of a sudden it brings energy to that career that you couldn't stand. So for example, um, this woman who recently called me, who was the attorney for 17 years, you know, she's making a great salary. She said, Beth, I don't feel like I can start over right now, but I feel like I'm just not making a difference in the world. And we brainstormed ways for her to get involved in volunteer work. And she emailed me recently and she said, Be between the volunteer work and now taking better care of her well-being, she feels like she's really enjoying her career again. So I want to emphasize for any of you that are experiencing some burnout, work on ways to get out of the burnout and recharge because sometimes it is a mistake to just change, to just jump to something new because if we're burnt out, we're not going to have the energy and the focus that we need 
to make the change. Making change, as we know, is a lot of stress. So let me share with you um, some strategies that my clients have found helpful. And then we're going to open it up for some ideas on some things that you have done. This one's a little bit more, more tricky to think about, self-awareness. So some of my clients find, again, that they focus more on their values. What is missing? So for this client I shared who wanted to figure out a way that she could give more to the world. Another really important strategy is being aware of how you react to stressors. So if you write on your sheet of paper right now, and if I had a flip chart, let's all pretend, A plus B equals C. And you're going to circle that B. So A is the stressor. A is that really, really annoying colleague or employee. B is I'm going to be, I reacted and I wasn't polite to them. And C results in, oh, that's just not, a, that's not leadership. So for that B, it should be, okay, I have to take a deep breath, let it in, let it go, and then C, I can move forward in a professional way. So be aware of how you react to stressors. It's being aware of that B. How are we handling some of the craziness that is going on in our career? So there's a, a, con there's a concept called deficiency focusing. And we need to be aware of that. And that's when we focus on the negatives too often rather than focusing on the positives. So we may find it's every once in a while we might have a day like this. But when we, when we become really focused on deficiency focusing, we, we become very negative to be around. And that brings us down that burnout escalator because we, we not only cause stress to ourselves, we cause secondhand stress to others. A few years ago, I was interviewed by the Wall Street Journal and they called to say, we're doing an article on secondhand stress, but we need a client of yours to interview. Do you think you'd have one? This was the sad, sad story was that I could think of five clients that, would, that were passing along secondhand stress. And they did, do the, they did do the interview. And the woman, when she got interviewed, she said, Beth, I cannot believe how long I was in that deficiency focusing mode before I started coaching and working on my resiliency. So it's really, really important to be aware of, you know what? You know, and someone mentioned earlier in the well being section the importance of gratitude. And again, all of the stuff to the extreme, we don't, we just want to have it in moderation. We want to be like an eight. So the other idea is maybe you just want to continue to focus more on having a growth mindset. And this can, and again, there's great ways to enhance our self-awareness with growth mindset, watching TED Talks, listening to podcasts. Um, and now we would like to have you chat in, what are some of the things that you do for your own self-awareness when you are dealing with career and life stress. We would love to hear from you some strategies. <clears throat> and I'm paying attention to the time. So Michelle, I'll probably only, t if we do get, we'll probably take one or two and then we'll keep going. Perfect, so we have remembering to focus on one thing at a time work out on a daily basis, really focus on diet and breathing. And I think we have one more comment coming in. Okay. And why that last comment's coming in, I want you to go to that action plan sheet that has the A and the B and the C. And I want you to think about the A. Is there something you'd like to start? to just be a little bit more self-aware of how you're handling your stress. And the B, is there something you wanna stop? Do you notice, again, only you're gonna see this paper, is there someone you're really negative with? Maybe you wanna be more positive with that one specific person. And then C, is there something you wanna continue? Maybe you're doing a fabulous job at your self-awareness and you're just gonna give yourself a check plus plus for self-awareness. And one of the other comments here is 
having a stress meter as part of our team meeting where we can say what support we can give each other, but also what work we're excited about so it's not only negative. Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that person just, I've never had anyone share that awesome strategy. All right, we can move on. Okay, terrific. So now I'm gonna bring you to the last piece of the strategy that I'm gonna talk about today, which is brand. And when you think about your own brand, are you aware of what makes you unique? What are your natural attributes? And the, the second part is, is what I consider so important. What is the impact you are making on a daily basis in your career? And what is your reputation? So this, once I learned about personal branding 10 years ago, this is what I realized why I was going down that burnout escalator was I really didn't know my attributes and this, I didn't know how to get my brand out there, but I also, I also wasn't working my brand. So this became really important to me. And, and again, as I mentioned, this is a focal point of my resiliency model. And the way I define it is, it's really taking a close look at yourself and leveraging your attributes that add value. So if right now, if you flip over your sheet, if you could write down when you are at your best, what three words describe you? So for me, the three words that describe me when, when I am at my best are resilient, connector, because I love to connect people, and leader. And when I can use those three words on a daily basis, I am so energized. What I often, on the careers that I, that I was going down that stress escalator, I was not using my attributes. But the other piece about personal branding, which is so important, does no matter where you work, is making yourself visible and collaborative in an authentic, genuine way. So branding is not bragging. Branding is letting yourself shine like this balloon. And what's so important is if you're not branding yourself, you can be sure others do it for you. So in my book, I have stories about clients that all of a sudden got burnt out because their manager was driving their career. And we all need to be proactive on our own career and really have those career conversations with our managers so that we get, we do those projects. Again, it's that 80-20 rule. We're never gonna have that perfect career but if we only if we only like 20% of what we're doing, we're going to end up burnt out. We want to we want to really be able to enjoy 60, 70, or 80% of our tasks. So the other piece about branding is not only do we need to know our brand, we need to communicate our brand, and we need to have a brand strategy. So what does that mean? Do we have a six month plan for what we want to talk to our boss about? And I'm going to recommend that you think about, as a result of this webinar, if there were three things you would like your manager to know about your career, what are they? And if right now you're saying, I have no idea, that might be your A item. So when I talk about communicating your brand, I want you to have clarity, consistency, and constancy. So. LinkedIn is not just a job search tool. LinkedIn is a proactive career tool. LinkedIn should be something you should be on at least at a minimum once a month. And you should have a branded profile. You should have a summary statement where if you read it, it would make me say, wow, this person's attributes are, this is what they like to do. And if you're thinking to yourself, how do I create a brand strategy? You want to think about your accomplishments. So this can be another homework assignment for those of you that I'm going to get to meet in April is to write down from 2018 and 2019, what were your top three work accomplishments? You write them down and then under each one, you just bullet. What were the, what were the things that added impact and why? 
And what you're gonna find is there's you're gonna be able to connect the dots. And that's gonna help you really learn what your personal brand is. So now I want you to be honest with yourself and let's think about how well you're doing with your brand strategy. Because again, to be resilient, we need to be able to move forward in our careers. So the first question is, are you aware of your personal brand? If I asked you that question, I asked you, what are your top three strengths? And what's the difference you wanna make in your organization? Could you answer that? And if you can, kudos, awesome. Number two, are you clear on your unique strengths and your attributes? Number three, and this is, this is one I want you to write down. Do you know how others perceive your brand? Because often what happens is we might think we're fabulous at being analytical and strategic and as a leader, but our manager might think, oh, something totally different. So don't wait till once a year to find out. I encourage my clients at least quarterly to have a branding conversation with your manager. And if you think they're gonna be clueless about brand, ask them how you're being perceived. And ask them, do they see the, does he or she see the impact you're making? And finally, number four, are you asking for feedback? And I don't mean feedback all the time. I mean on a variable interval way where in, after important projects, you, you casually, maybe you're, there was someone at the meeting and you have coffee with them and say, hey, how did I do at that meeting? So you start collecting feedback from teams, from your manager, from people that see you and people that you trust. So I want you again, I'm gonna share some, some best practices and I want you to start thinking when it comes to your brand, what is one thing you would love to start? What is one thing you would love to stop? Maybe it's saying yes to every single project that doesn't fit your strengths, but what's one thing you, may, you wanna continue? Maybe you do a great job already connecting with people on LinkedIn. And at this point too, I wanna to encourage anyone that is on this webinar I don't connect with random people, but put a little note, connect with me on LinkedIn and say, I attended the Northeastern webinar and I would love to connect with you. And I post uh, regularly a lot of articles on resiliency, recharge and personal branding. So let, let me share a few strategies that my clients have found really helpful. The first one is when you meet someone, do you, do you use your job title? or do you share a little bit about your story? So if I met someone just said I'm an executive coach, ah, oh, boring, there's a zillion million executive coaches in the world. But when I meet someone and I say, well, my career is kind of interesting. I started as a career coach for 10 years and I transitioned to become a leadership coach, but my passion is focusing on resiliency, preventing burnout and impact for every individual they're like wow you must be busy so i share my story do you share your career story and maybe that could be a good homework assignment secondly how many of you have branded your linkedin profile do you have a recent headshot recent even past two years is okay i had a client recently i looked at the headshot and he said it was 15 years old from his like something or other i said no 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 we, it needs to be within the last two years. And summary, how many of you have a summary? And again, the summary should make me say, wow, I wanna to talk to this person. What, are you asking for feedback? And if you're looking for a tool to get feedback, I would encourage you to take, to take a look at the 360 Reach website and they have a free tool. It's called 360reachme.com and you could check out, it's a free personal branding assessment. And the final bullet for some of you that maybe may already be doing a, an awesome job at your branding is how are you doing, how are you reflecting yourself at meetings? Are you multitasking? We're seeing a ton of articles about how it's so hard for people to be focused at meetings. And that first visual I shared with you from the very beginning and then finally, emails. 
I have a new leadership coaching client who the vice president said to me, I cannot stand how that individual, Beth, she sends everything with bold letters. Everything is urgent. Everything. She needs to stop doing that. It's affecting her brand. So again, your emails, do you have a signature line? Do you read them over to make sure that you don't have a, you know, too many typos? Are they, are they clear? Are they concise? Okay, so now it's time. Go back to your action plan sheet. Let's think about your personal brand. What would be one thing you'd like to start? Is it more time on your LinkedIn? Is it maybe just asking for feedback? Keep it really small and be specific. Now let's go to your B. Is there a behavior you want to stop? Again, maybe it's you, maybe you're on, maybe you work from home and you're on conference calls and you multitask. Maybe it's saying, you know what, I am going to do less multitasking. I am going to flip my phone over at meetings. Give yourself something specific for your B. And then finally for your C, what are you doing a great job with that you want to continue? So maybe it's that you feel like your executive presence is good. You, you come to work, you feel like you're, you're shining when you meet, you say hello to people. Um, what is something that you're doing in the way of branding that you want to continue? So I'm going to have you fill your A, your B, and C. And as we know with New Year's resolutions, you don't want to make it huge. You want to make it really small and specific so that, again, what's wonderful about, again, I want to thank Northeastern for offering this webinar is many of you in the Boston area or in Massachusetts, hopefully I'll get to see you for the live session. And you can let me know how you're making an impact on these three areas of well-being, self-awareness, and brand. So how do my clients make this happen? I wanted to share with you, and this, this is all book, uh, Career Recharge, and I also offer in the book a free PDF that you can download. And what I encourage my clients to do is to schedule five minutes every Friday to take a look at your recharge. So, and to think about what is the time of the day where you have your coffee or your tea or you eat your yogurt and you have your phone. Again, sorry, I have to use technology, but we need to have these cues. And you type in, you have pop-up career recharge. And in those five minutes, you ask yourself these three questions. What were my resiliency wins this week? So maybe it, you, you ask for feedback from your manager or a team member. Number two, what is my goal for next week? Maybe my goal for next week is I wanna work on, on my LinkedIn profile, getting a better picture. And number three is what is my plan to achieve that goal? So I'm gonna ask my, I have a haircut coming up, I'm gonna ask my hairdresser to take my picture. So again, today is about influence, impact, and moving forward in our resiliency. And I wanted to share this strategy because I work with a lot of very, very busy clients, and they have found, you know, there's a lot of things they can't get into their day, but they can get the Friday, five minutes on a Friday to focus on asking themselves these three questions. And finally, it, I can't believe it, um, we have two minutes left. So I want to wish you an incredible journey of resiliency. I want you to think about the difference that you can make today in your career. And I want to encourage you to connect with me, not only on LinkedIn, but I'm also, um, I have a free monthly e-zine on my website, bethkennedy.com. And I'm on, I have a business Facebook page, Banati Training and Development. Those of you that are on Twitter, um, I'm Coach B. Kennedy. And Michelle, I don't know if it's okay if, if anyone can stay on the line for two or three minutes. If anyone has any questions, I'm available. Beth, this has been so helpful. I love the great ideas that are inspiring to action and the very practical ideas that you've shared, as well as 
keeping the A, B, and C list is wonderful. I'm sure we're all leaving here with a lot of things that we're going to put into place. Um, one of them is that we can add reading your book to our, to our action list. And I greatly appreciate your expertise and your willingness to participate in two events with us. I know we've gotten a lot of value and, and so important in our careers to focus on resilience as you're, as you're teaching us. So thank you so much. Thank you all for sharing your ideas. And if people want to stay for a few minutes to ask questions, please join us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michelle. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the book is available on Amazon. <laughs> If Perfect. anyone is interested. And it's good. I've read it. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. So if anyone has any quick questions or the other thing I would encourage you to do, if you have any comments um, for Northeastern, they would, they're always open for your feedback and they'll send them over to me. But, um, and again, thank you for your time. And if anyone does have a question, I'm available, you know, for another five minutes. So Michelle will be happy and Deanna will be happy to navigate that for us. And Beth, there's a question. If you can restate the name of the 360 Reach site. Yes, 360reach.com is the site. And um, William Aruda, who is one of, he actually recently won one of the top 15 gurus in the personal branding space. So that is his website. And they offer a free, um, a free branding assessment and it's 360 reach, but R-E-A-C-H-M-E dot -E com. And you can actually send that out to participants, people that you work with, and it only focuses on your brand. It doesn't assess performance, just how you're perceived. And someone wrote that they feel resilient already. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> And a question of how do you become less sensitive to feedback? You know what? I want to just share that this comes up a lot when I teach the live class, that often when I ask individuals how many people in the room ask for feedback, it's probably in a class of 25, there's probably only three or four. And one of the things that I recommend to people to do is when you, when you ask for feedback, try to ask for specific examples. So for I had a woman, I had a client yesterday whose who's boss, her boss said she gets too caught up in the details and doesn't focus enough on the big picture. So she said to me, she was so frustrated because she thought she has been doing a great job being strategic, thinking about the big picture. So I had her go up, go back and ask her boss for specific examples. And the other thing I always remind people to do is to, we have to also realize that we need to have a theme of feedback. So just getting feedback by one person isn't enough. We need a minimum of three people in one theme. So I said to her, it's not enough feedback. You need to find other people on your team. So, but I also do believe focusing on these five areas, the more we're focusing on our resiliency, we get stronger with taking some of that, that hard news and we're more open to it. We're more open to it. So that, thank you. That was a great question. Great suggestion. Any other questions out there? Okay, I think, oh, we are getting one more question. Okay. Oh, so thank you. Oh, excellent. Well, um, I just want to thank everyone. And again, I just want to mention that if you are in the Boston area, Northeastern is sponsoring. I'll be doing another Career Recharge live session on April 24th, 6 to 7.30 p.m. More will come from um, Michelle and Deanna's and their great department. And I want to thank both of them. Some of you, if you're still on, we had major technical issues and talk about being resilient. The two of them were unbelievable. And the time and attention that they have spent to make this happen as we, we just hit every possible technical roadblock we could hit. So I want to thank both of you um, for letting, you know, for being resilient so that we could have a chance to have this happen today with the technology madness. Thank you. And you were pretty calm too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone.